This is lesson 9-4, and uh, the title of this lesson is called Circular and Periodic Functions. But a big part of lesson 9-4 is going to involve for us the creation of what is known as the unit circle. And it could be possibly the most useful tool uh, that you will use in your study of trig, uh, not only in Algebra 2, but in the math classes that you take uh, down the road. So I'm going to go with you step by step how to create the unit circle. Eventually um, for a quiz or a test uh, you will have to do all of what we're doing uh, on your own. So pay close attention. I'm going to go a little bit uh, more in depth on this video than I did in class because I just felt like I didn't really have the time to do it justice um, so, uh, at least in the beginning, I'm going to show a little bit more of why behind uh, some of the parts of the unit circle, why they end up like they do, uh, especially these ordered pairs that you will see in just a little bit fall uh, on the unit circle itself. So, uh, let's just jump right in. Uh, first of all, the unit circle, by definition, has a radius of one unit, okay? So remember, radius is uh, the line that we could draw from the center of a circle to the circle itself. All right, so all the way around, the unit circle has a radius of one. So with that said, we can identify some points where the unit circle crosses the x and y axes. So if this is radius of one, then this point is identified as 1, 0. Up here, this would be the point 0, 1. Over here on the negative x-axis, this is negative 1, 0. And down here, of course, is 0, negative 1. And another thing we do as we make our way around the unit circle is we identify angle measurements both in degrees and radians. Okay, so this, what we call the initial side, uh, that would be either zero degrees, or if we go all the way around the unit circle, it would be 360 degrees. Okay, and uh, we also do the same thing in radians. So uh, we would say all the way around 360 degrees would be two pi radians. And so we'll do that same thing for these what we call quadrantal angles, these angles that uh, help divide our coordinate plane up into quadrants. So remember uh, this, If again, this is always the initial side and we're going to go in a positive direction. So this would be the 90 degree angle and we would say in radians it's pi over 2. This would be 180 degrees or pi radians. Down here would be 270 degrees or 3 pi over 2 radians. And then we've already established if we go all the way around we did 360 degrees or 2 pi radians. Okay so now the unit circle is really an extension of what we learned uh, about the, the trig functions that come out naturally from the 30, 60, 90 special triangle and the 45, 45, 90. So hopefully you've already uh, made yourself well aware, you had to on the last quiz, how to come up with, uh, for example, sine 30 or cosine 45 or cosine 60. All of those can be taken from our knowledge of those special right triangles, those two special right triangles that we talked about in lesson 9-1. Well the unit circle gives us all of those and then many many more because the trig functions that we get from the special right triangles are limited obviously to the 30 degree, 45, and 60 degree angles but there are obviously many larger angles than that and when it comes to those larger angles we can just look at our unit circle and we can come up with those trig functions very quickly. So what I'm going to do is start drawing. We'll start with the 30 degree angle. And uh, I went ahead and measured this out for you so we could get pretty close to what 30 degrees actually looks like. And so um, on your graph paper, 
Uh, just count up eight marks, two, four, six, eight, from the x-axis and do the same thing over here so we can have something good to look at. And we're just going to connect those two blue dots with the center and we're going to draw that line and it's going to represent a 30 degree angle. So let me get my line draw tool ready to go and we'll just do these lines in blue. And so you'll need some sort of straight edge and we're going to say that the interior angle, and I won't do this for every angle, but remember theta is here and uh, we would say initial side, terminal side. The terminal side, this blue side is representing together with the initial side representing a 30 degree angle. And then again, we want to make sure we include the radians. So in radians, that's pi over six. Okay. What we're interested in on the unit circle is the ordered pair where this terminal side hits the unit circle itself. Okay. And something interesting happens. And I'm, I'm not going to do this for every single angle, but I just want to show you a little proof of uh, this 30 degree angle and how we get these ordered pairs. And when we do, I think you'll see something very familiar. Well, if you think about it, it's true that uh, this is really a 30, 60, 90 if I just drop a straight line. Okay, so I'm going to do my best to do a straight line representing perpendicular, creating a right angle. And now what I've done is created a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle, which is half of what we would call an equilateral triangle. Remember, equilateral just means that uh, all three sides have the same length. Okay, so I'm going to just drop straight down again. And this is just a rough sketch. You don't actually have to write what I'm doing right now. Um, you'll end up erasing it anyway. But I just wanted to show you a little proof of how we get this ordered pair where this 30 degree terminal side of the angle crosses the unit circle. Okay, remember that the unit circle has a radius of one. Okay, so that means this leg of this triangle that I've drawn would be one. And if this is truly equilateral, which it is, because remember this would be 60 degrees, and I've also created 60 degrees down here in the bottom, and 30 plus 30, 30 above and 30 below makes 60 degrees. So I've created an equilateral triangle. Well, if this part of the triangle is measured at one, then this other side must be one and this total side must be one. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense to you. I'll just put the one out here on the, off to the side. So all three of my sides equal one. And that comes from the fact primarily that the unit circle by definition has a radius of one. Okay. Well, this whole side of this equilateral triangle is one, which means that half of that, so from this ordered pair down to the x-axis would be obviously 0.5. And the same thing would be true down here. Okay. So my question then becomes, well, how do I get this part of the triangle? All right, and we could stay with the fact that this is a 30 degree angle. All right, remember this is really 30 degrees. I mean, together it would make a full 60 degrees for the equilateral, but all I want to do is come up with this um, part of the triangle, either the middle of the equilateral triangle or this leg if we treat it as the 30, 60, 90. So I'm just going to use Pythagorean theorem. Okay. So I'll just call this, um, uh, we'll just call it side B. So one squared equals a squared. Okay. One half squared plus B squared. Okay. So I got one minus and one half squared is a fourth equals B squared. Three fourths is equal to B squared. 
And now when I do the square root of both sides, just think of doing the square root of both sides of the equation, I get the square root of 3 over 2 is equal to b. Well, that's kind of interesting. Now I know what this part of the triangle is, the square root of 3 over 2. Okay, well now let's go back and identify what this ordered pair is, where this terminal side hits the unit circle right there. Well, to get to that point from the origin, I went to the right the length of this triangle, which is the square root of 3 over 2. And to get to that point, I went up this leg of the triangle, which we identified as 1 half. Now, looking at your um, information about special right triangles, um, if you have those in front of you, it's great because if you look on there, we identified cosine 30 degrees as the square root of 3 over 2. And now that we have the unit circle, we can see that just by taking the x coordinate of where this angle crosses the unit circle. And I've just shown you a little proof as to where the square root of 3 over 2 actually came from. And so if you look at your unit circle and, or the special right triangle information, you defined, hopefully, and I think I went through this with you on your notes, sine 30 degrees is equal to 1 half. Well, looking at the unit circle, that's pretty easy to come up with because you always equate sine, and it's obvious to see here, uh, we got that y coordinate of this ordered pair by taking that y distance. Okay, we went up a half. So you can always equate sine with the y coordinate of where a particular angle crosses the unit circle. All right, so you don't have to rely anymore on just knowing those special right triangle rules. You can actually look at the unit circle. X always equates to cosine, and Y always equates to sine. Okay, so um, I'm done with uh, this little proof, and now I'm just going to make my way around and identify the other angles uh, on the unit circle. I just wanted you to kind of get a feel for where those numbers came from. All right, so let me erase, because we're going to really fill up this slide by the time we're done. Okay, so we've drawn the 30 degree angle. Don't really need theta any longer. And now let's do a 45. And that's pretty easy because uh, we're just going to, on our graph paper, we're going to line up these corners and the center and uh, just do your best to draw a straight line, trying to make these nice straight lines. Okay, so let's label this one. This is 45 degrees, and in radians, it's pi over 4. All right, so what we're interested in is the intersection where this terminal side of the 45-degree angle crosses the unit circle because that gives us some valuable information. Well, uh, go to your, again, your 9-1 notes and look up what cosine 45 degrees is. And you should see that cosine 45 degrees is the square root of 2 over 2. So that's the x-coordinate of this point. Remember, cosine and x are connected. And if you looked up sine 45 degrees off of that same set of notes, you would say that sine 45 is also the square root of 2 over 2. So that is the ordered pair for the 45 degree angle where it crosses the unit circle. So if I ask you in the future what is sine 45, you can look at the unit circle and you look at the y coordinate of that point and you'll have it. Okay, it's as simple as that. Okay, let's do the 60 degree angle. And for this, um, we can just count over six uh, across the top, two, four, six. It doesn't have to be measured out exactly, but I think that's pretty close. Uh, two, four, six. Yeah, that's pretty close. 
All right, so let's label this as 60 degrees. And then don't forget, you also need to include the radian measures, uh, pi over three. Okay, you can probably guess what the ordered pair of this point is, where the 60 degree angle crosses the unit circle. I think I'll move my zero one over just a little bit. I'll just put it right here. Okay. All right, well, if you're looking at your 9-1 notes, you're looking at your special right triangle information, um, and look up cosine 60 degrees. And cosine 60 degrees should be 1 half, and that is the x-coordinate of that point for the 60 degree angle where it crosses the unit circle. If you look up sine 60 degrees, you should see that it's a square root of 3 over 2. And so that's it. And so the once you get this first quadrant, the other angles all the way around the circle are going to utilize these same ordered pairs. It's just that we're going to change the plus or minus depending on what quadrant we're in. Okay, let me show you what I mean by that. Okay, so we know what the 90 degree angle is. Uh, cosine 90 is zero because that's the x-coordinate of that quadrantal angle. Sine 90 is 1. Okay, that's the y-coordinate. All right, so let's make, um, let's make an angle that will represent 120 degrees. Make sure I've got it lined up right. Oh, I missed that pretty bad. Let's try that again. Two, four, six, going through the middle. Okay, and uh, again, I just went 90 plus another 30. So basically I'm doing the reference angle for the 60 degree, but it's in quadrant two. So this is 120 degrees and in radians, it's two pi over three. And if you're not sure, just go back and review uh, how we convert from degrees to radians using that conversion factor and 60 goes into both of those 60 into 120 is 2 60 into 180 is 3 that's how i how i'm getting these radian measures okay so the ordered pair well let's look at the ordered pair for its cousin over here in quadrant one all right if you think about it uh, this is just using the reference angle 60 degrees but using Make, remembering that it's in quadrant two. Well, in quadrant two, x is negative. So this ordered pair, it's very similar to this, except it's gonna be negative one half, and then positive square root of three over two, because y is positive in quadrant two. All right, and so let's keep on going. We'll do 135 degrees, and you might be thinking, where did you get 135? Well, I just went 90 plus another 45 more. This is 45 as half of a quadrant. All right, and in radians, if we changed 135 into radians, it would be three pi over four. Okay, so we need this ordered pair. All right, so I'm gonna look over here in quadrant one as it, at its cousin. And remember, it's the same ordered pair, it's just that I gotta remember that X is negative in quadrant two, Y is positive. All right, simple as that. So if you know quadrant one, these other quadrants are gonna be pretty easy. Uh, two, four, six, eight, I'm gonna count up eight and then draw another line to represent our next angle. It's pretty close. Okay, so we did the 120, 135, and then we're just gonna go another 15 to make 150 degrees, or you could think 90 plus 60. This should be 30 as a reference angle. And in radians, it's five pi over six. All right, and the ordered pair, that is the intersection. Just look over here at the cousin, pi over six, and just make the X coordinate negative negative root three over two, positive one half. So before we leave this quadrant, let me just show you what we're gonna be doing. Now you can look at the unit circle and you can tell me that sine 120 degrees is the square root of three over two because it's the y coordinate 
of that point <clears throat> where the 120 degree terminal side of the angle hits the unit circle. You can look at the unit circle and tell me that cosine 150 degrees is the square root of three over negative square root of three over two, because that's the x coordinate of that point where that 150 degree angle crosses the unit circle. Okay, it's as simple as that. All right, so we're back to 180 degrees. So you would say sine 180 degrees is zero. It's the y coordinate. Cosine 180 degrees is negative one. It's the x coordinate. Okay, so now we can kind of go a little bit faster. We have all of our lines drawn. We just need to identify uh, angles in degrees and radians. So you can think of it this way. We've gone 180 plus another 30. Okay, so this is 210 degrees. And now let me show you a little trick uh, for radians. Um, there's other ways to do this, but this, uh, we're at the other end, the opposite end of this line that we've already defined. The, in quadrant one, this was pi over six radians. But to get the other end of that, which is around, halfway around, you could just do this, six plus one, there's an invisible one in front of pi, six plus one is seven pi over six. Or you could do the conversion factor like I showed you up here, but it's a little bit faster if you just do six plus one and then over six. All right, so what's this ordered pair? Well, according to over here, it's the square root of three over two and one half, but in quadrant three, uh, x and y are both negative. So it's negative square root of three over two, negative one half. All right, so this angle in degrees, um, it's like 180 plus another 45, that's 225 degrees. Uh, if I want the radians, I'm just gonna go up here and do four plus one, which is five pi over four. All right, and word pair is pretty easy because in quadrant one, they're both positive. In quadrant three, they're both negative negative root two over two. All right, this is 180 plus another 60, which is 240. In radians, if I want radians, I'm gonna do three plus one, which is four pi over three. Okay, ordered pair. Well, if you need to, you can look up here and it's these two ordered, it's this ordered pair, but they're both negative, negative one half negative root three over two. Okay, we've already talked about the 270 degree um, cosine 270 is zero, sine 270 is negative one. And now let's talk about this. So this is 270 plus 30, that's 300 degrees. In radians, uh, just go up here and three plus two is five pi over three. All right, and the ordered pair, just like it is up here, except it's switched. In quadrant four, x is positive and y is negative. Okay, here we have another 15 added on, or you could think 270 plus 45, that's 315 degrees. And in radians, it's four plus three, which is seven pi over four. And ordered pair looks like this. Um, it's positive square root of two over two, negative root two over two. And we just got one more. This is um, 270 plus 60, which is 330 degrees. And in radians, it's six plus five, which is 11 pi over six. And we're just about done. I look over here and it's just the reverse as far as the signs go. X is positive in quadrant four and Y is negative. So that is the unit circle. And I'm gonna ask you on, first of all, it'll be a quiz to do pretty much all of this. You, you will be doing everything, including labeling the angles, both in degrees and radians, uh, all of the ordered pairs where we have either regular angles or quadrantal angles where those angles cross the unit circle. So be prepared. Hopefully, um, as you use this, as you do them, obviously it'll get easier 
uh, to work with. So now we're going to move on from our discussion. You will be using this unit circle to do some of your homework, and I'm going to come back to that. But let's get to uh, some specifics uh, about your homework problems. Okay, let me work through a few examples uh, that are very similar to your homework problems. Um, you'll breeze through these problems where I've, I've just copied the instructions from your textbook. Uh, the terminal side of some angle theta in center position intersects the unit circle at each point P. So find cosine theta and sine theta. The, the emphasis, the point of this exercise is for you to relate the fact that cosine and the x-coordinate of the point that crosses the unit circle are the same. All right, so my answer for letter A for cosine theta, I just take the x-coordinate and that's it. Sine theta, well, sine and y are the same. So sine theta will be the square root of 3 over 2. Same thing for this one. Here's another point. It crosses the unit circle at a different place down in quadrant 4. But all I need to know is cosine is x, the x-coordinate for that point that crosses where the angle crosses the unit circle, and sine is y. And that is it. Okay, now let's talk about um, period, and uh, we'll start off talking about cycle, because in my definition of period, which is what you're going to be doing, uh, I'm using a term cycle, and uh, I just want you to understand what I'm referring to when I talk about that. All right. When you do these problems that I've listed for you here, you're going to be looking at graphs like this. So, first of all, what do I mean by cycle? When you're looking at a graph and you're asked to determine the cycle, we can think of that as one complete pattern. So the period, which is what we're interested in, is the horizontal length, horizontal length of one cycle. So let me just show you. I'm going to color in for this first example A. I usually start at the origin. Typically, you can start anywhere you want. But to me, it makes sense just to start here at 0, 0. And I'm going to color in what would be a cycle for this particular graph. Okay, so do you notice how it goes up and then it goes down and then after it goes down, it starts to repeat. Okay, so this part that I've shaded represents a complete pattern because after that, it's just a repetition of that same pattern. So this is one cycle. What you're going to do is just look at the x-axis and identify how long is that cycle? And that's the definition of a period. And I went ahead and circled the answer for this first one. It's four units is the length of that particular period. Okay, same thing here. Um, the cycle, let's, we'll start here and I'm just gonna trace it. Okay, so just think of when you're back to square one, which would be right there. Okay, we're back to normal or where we started and then it's just a repetition of that same pattern well how long is that cycle and it also is four units just look at the x-axis be careful because um, sometimes they change the units of the x-axis and you want to make sure you're counting based on the correct unit of measure all right um Letter C, you can actually just picture this as intersecting here, just shift it over. Uh, you won't ever come up with a fraction as your uh, period length. It'll always be a positive whole number. So let's just, um, I'm just going to do it again. I'm going to trace over one cycle. All right, so when I reach this point, I'm just repeating. Okay, I'm back to where I started. And uh, it looks like it's halfway between, and again, this is where you can get mixed up a little bit. The, these are in twos, so it's halfway in between four and six. You will never have to estimate and say, oh, that looks like four and, and one-fourth or four and one-half. Uh, it's not that tricky. Uh, your cycle, when you answer these questions, will just be a natural number. Okay, so my answer for letter C would be five. 
All right, so for letter D, I'm going to start here and I'm going to trace my cycle. And when I get to here, I'm back to doing that same thing again. So you can think of it as when, I've, when I'm back to square one, then the cycle repeats, all right? And so what you're after is the period, which is the horizontal length of that cycle. And in this case, it's eight units. Okay, so those are the types of things you'll be doing, looking at graphs and identifying the period uh, of those graphs. And then finally, this is where you'll want to use your unit circle. And um, you're going to be looking up on the unit circle uh, certain angle measurements. Now you might be thinking, well, our unit circle only goes up to 360 degrees, and you're correct. So this is an example of where we'll use a coterminal angle. So just think, um, for 480 degrees, that's like going all the way around one time plus another 120. So we'll look up on our unit circle 120 degrees, which is coterminal with 480. I mean, we talked about coterminal uh, a few lessons ago. So in essence, I will get my answer by looking up cosine 120 degrees. So I'm going to go to my unit circle. And here I am at 120 degrees. And remember, all I have to do is take the x coordinate. Cosine and x are the same as far as these ordered pairs. The x coordinate represents cosine for the angle that crosses the unit circle. All right, so my answer will be negative one half. Okay, number or letter B. Um, if you wanted to change this into a mixed number, you would say two and three fourths pi. Well, two pi, remember, is all the way around one time in radians. That's another way of saying 360 degrees. And then we're going to go another three fourths pi. Okay, pi is halfway around. So I just did a little rough sketch. Um, looks like we're at 3 fourths pi. So let's go to our unit circle and we'll go to 3 fourths pi and we're looking for cosine which is the x coordinate of that point where that angle crosses the unit circle and that will be negative square root of 2 over 2. And that would be my answer for letter B. Okay, here's sine. Now this is negative, all right? So negative 3 pi over 4, negative 3 fourths pi. So let's go to our unit circle, and this time we'll go in a negative direction. All right, so this, uh, if I went all the way around, this would be negative pi if I went to this spot. But I'm only going 3 fourths, which would put me right here. Okay, you can think of, here's a fourth, Here's a fourth, two fourths, which is a half, and then here I am at three fourths, okay? And it's sine, so I look at the y coordinate. So sine of this angle given here in the positive direction, it was five pi over four, it's negative square root of two over two. And then finally, 690 degrees, again, uh, that's like saying 360 degrees all the way around once, plus another 330, 330 degrees. Okay, coterminal. So let's go to our unit circle, and we'll look up 330 degrees, which is right here. And I forgot if we're looking, uh, we're doing sine, which is the y coordinate of that angle. All right, so here I am at 330 degrees, and where that angle crosses the unit circle, it's the y-coordinate, which is negative one-half. And that's it. Those are your um, examples to help you with the homework. You now know how to create your own unit circle. And so uh, your assignment will be those problems. And if you have any questions, let me know.